They can bury me in the ground as deep as they like, but I'll grow back. Here's your look at the DC Collectibles of the Batman the Animated Series, figure number 40, Poison Ivy. The villains have broken out of the GCPD Rogues Gallery 5-pack and now coming to you as individual figures. Poison Ivy comes with an incredible 5 sets of hands and a new paint deco. She also comes with one of her beloved flowering plants in a decorative pod. Before we get a closer look at Poison Ivy, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. She's going to be a little bit shorter than perhaps some of the others that we've looked at before. Generally, Poison Ivy is a small character anyways. I'm going to stop the tape measure right there. And according to the readout, you're looking at the figure standing 5.4 inches in height. And that in centimeters makes the figure 13.9, just a little less than 14 centimeters tall. Let's bring in a couple of size comparisons. First, we'll have a look at Bane next to Poison Ivy. After all, it's the last figure that we had a look at. So towering, in fact, that he actually clears the top of my camera. A little harder to see. But yes, he is a lot taller than Poison Ivy. And just for some other comparisons, I'll bring in the same Batman that we looked at with the Bane. It's not truthfully the right Batman from the animated series, at least from when Poison Ivy looks like this. But it just gives you an idea of how she scales up with some of the other animated series figures. Having a look at the figure's accessories, the first thing we'll have a look at is the pot of roses. Red roses, to be actually exact. The roses themselves are stemmed in green, and of course the tops of them, being that they are red roses after all, are red. Yeah, it's very smart. You're, you guys are all very clever. The bottom of it kind of wished it could have been done in brown. It doesn't so much look like it's sitting in dirt as it certainly looks like it's sitting in slime or swamp water. Way to get into marketing there, humbled reviewer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do feel like the, the base of it should have been at least done in brown. But I mean, you know, again, to be fair, it's just a pot of red roses that she's only going to be holding in her hand anyways. At least it could be said that the pot itself is decoratively uh, striped. So you can see alternating colors of both red and blue. Uh, it doesn't really technically fit into her hand. In fact, having her holding it, I sort of end up just having her kind of cupping it and resting the pot in between her hands. You can sort of have it resting also against her torso, like if she's kind of holding it, protecting her plants, for example. But she doesn't necessarily have, I would say, holding hands really for so suited for holding the pot. I mean, she does come with like a couple of them that we'll talk about in a second. Like these are all sort of gripping hands. But if you like look at the pots, it's not really in, like the hands are intended for holding the pot. They sort of just end up sitting a bit loose. So if anything, I probably will just be displaying it likely in the one hand like that. And they'll likely just have her displayed with the crossbow, you know, the arm pointed forward, for example. So she does come with that. And then she comes with like a whole ton of hands. It's got me scratching my head. I can't understand why they would have thrown as many hands as they actually did. Uh, currently in the sockets aren't really the hands that came in out of the packaging. I mean, to be fair, those hands were just closed fists. And of course she has a pair of those. I just popped those out for the beginning of this review, swapped it out with something a little bit more friendlier for holding the plot. Um, but like I said, she does come with the fisted hands as well. We'll put the figure down just for one second because we will go back to her. She does come also with a pair of flat hands or relaxed hands. Nice just for straight. If you're having the arms just straight, you don't want to have them in fists, I'm sure. So she comes with a pair of uh, relaxed palms. Then she comes with uh, some hands where it's like, what? Why? How? And who? Uh, the fist hands we can put to the side because we've already looked at those. Uh, she does come with like a gestured hand. But really like these hands almost seem to lend themselves to accessories that the figure actually doesn't come included with. Like this one here, for example. Seems to me like it would be a hand for probably holding a single flower, but she doesn't come included with that. And that's sort of this, the case with a couple of these hands, actually, like this hand right here. What is she holding? An invisible gun? An invisible flower? I'll never really know. But she does come with, like I said, four extra hands, giving you like a total of eight hands, really. Counting technically the ones that are in her uh, forearms, she comes with like a total of what, 10 hands. I feel like that's almost too many hands for really what you need to do with them. Uh, let's just say if you do want to change out the hands, uh, you know what, we'll go with, 
I'm now deciding quickly which one I want to go with. Let, even if you want to just like change out one of the hands here, let's just pop it out just so I can show you what it looks like. Very narrow, slender uh, little pegs there that fit into a very small hole located on the bottom of the forearm. Fit that in place. Now I did do it on this side to also bring your attention to her very tiny crossbow as well. I feel like they simplified this crossbow feeling as if perhaps there was a string on the back of it, but it sort of just comes across more like a sigh than anything else. It's very crudely sculpted and feel like it really lacks some of the additional details. But one thing you do want to be careful is when you pop the hands out that you don't clip this. It's soft plastic at least. It's not to say though, you still want to not be careful with it. But like I said, the hands at least are easy to peg and unpull and well, unpull to pop those out from the forearms. It certainly is a lot easier than say, for example, the uh, animated series Batgirl, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, had some real troubling times trying to pop those hands out and replace them with other ones. As for Poison Ivy's head sculpt and the overall figure itself, if, for example, you did acquire the GCPD set when it first came out and you got it for a steal, congratulations. You succeeded in doing something that unfortunately I myself wasn't able to, to acquire. I did find the GCPD set once at a local comic book store, but by that point they were already asking, I think it was about $230 to $240 for it. It's, I wasn't really going to be willing to pay that price. So in the back of my mind I always hoped that they would eventually re-release these figures. And by the fact that we are of course looking at Poison Ivy right now, things were rather successful and I was able to at least uh, pick these ones up later on. So what are the, like the real main differences between this one and the regular Poison Ivy from that box set? Primarily it's more so her thighs, the tights that she's wearing. These would have actually been a dark green. Uh, actually more like a neon light, like lime green color for the GCPD set. Whereas you can see here on this release, they went more the colors of the pale, similar to what we got with Bane. The top wasn't that much different. I could say, if anything, it might have been a tad darker. And then maybe the hair was just a light, slightly lighter shade. But really hasn't, there hasn't been really much that's been changed on this particular figure. Which again really does make me question something I mentioned in the review of Bane. If you had already picked up the GCPD set, I don't feel again swapping the colors and making them either lighter or darker to the one that we got before, unless you're a completionist, you're probably not going to be wanting to go and spend the money to pick up an individual Poison Ivy again. So all the more reasoning why I just don't think they could have easily not just released the exact same figure with the exact same color scheme, unless like I said, there are completionists out there that have to get every single color variation of every single animated series figures that DC collectibles are churning out. Having a look at their head sculpt, it's not terrible, I have to say. Like this part, just from the nose up, resembles well Pamela Isley. There's something about the mouth, though, like it seems like she's sucking on a Werther's original. It looks like she's got a pouty lip. I'm not really sure why they've sculpted the face like that. The, from the nose up, and the eyes and the eyebrow, everything is fine, really, for the figure. But it does have the mouth be a little more weirdly sculpted. Just not really sure why they went that route. The hair is okay. I do feel like it's a little on the high side. Uh, Pamela Isley does have this hairstyle in at least the old animated series episodes, but I don't feel like it sticks up as high as it is. Probably also should have been closer to that orange color. It's very flat on the back. As you can see, there's very little of additional depth going for the back of her hair, but it does flow at least over top of her shoulders, and it does at least resemble the animated style of figures, uh, characters at least though, despite the fact that the face is just a little bit off, just a little bit off for my liking. The, fair, the figure itself is generally quite small. Of course, we did the size comparisons between the Bane and a regular Batman. Poison Ivy is very small, and with that goes very thin framed uh, joints. So like bending the elbows and stuff, everything is very much smaller than say the likes of a Batman. It generally works pretty good. I mean, there's no real issues I have necessarily with the arms, with the hands, for example. I mean, moving those, I don't have any issues, nor do I have issues with the legs. But her feet sort of get awkward down at the bottom. Being the way that they've pegged them in place, uh, it kind of looks like she's wearing these calf guards covering over almost like medieval armored shoes. They're strange. I get the way because they had to, of course, incorporate the hinge joint, 
but it does awfully look awkward when you're seeing the way that the ankles are. And this particular foot on this side, this one isn't as bad, but this foot here does have, it seems, a bit of a gap where like the ankles aren't completely close enough to the foot that it does make them look a little on the bulbous side. For the figure's articulation, her head rotates technically back and forth. I would say technically. Of course, because the way that the hair is and because the hair has no give whatsoever, when you are rotating the head, being of that the case, you probably are going to be just doing this a lot of the times. The head is up normal straight, but when you are rotating the head, eh, the hair just sort of pushes the head down. There's nothing really you can do about that. In a way, actually, it sort of works to the figure's aid because when you are looking, say, to display the figure, if you have the head slightly on an angle, it actually comes across looking a little bit more like poison ivy than it does when the head's looking straight up. So kind of consider that a bit of a blessing. The arms hinge out at a full 90 degree bend. You can also equally rotate the arms all the way around. She does have a bend in the elbow, does rotate as well, and whatever hand, whether this hand or this hand, I always seem to always go on this side, but let's just say for the sake of argument, we rotate the hand on this side. It does also hinge in and out as well, but though the, the actual joint itself is very small, you can see right there, but you can still bend the, the hands back and forth. She has no waist swivel, uh, her legs split out on both sides, almost a full splits. They go forward, they go back. She does have a single bend in the knee because these are the older molds that they were using. She does have foot articulation, technically by the way that her boot rotates, and she does also have toe articulation or foot articulation as well. Biggest problem with this particular figure is not necessarily the sculpt. The sculpt could be better, yes, uh, one problem though with this figure is that she doesn't have peg holes on the undersides of her feet so getting her to stand sometimes can be difficult because she is a very small thin figure with very tiny 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 little feet still though it's not a bad looking poison ivy there's room i feel for improvement she does have for the most part the working elements for this to be a pretty good looking poison ivy from the animated series it's just unfortunate because dc collectibles has to follow sort of the requirements to get this as cartoon accurate as possible. She does kind of resort to being a very, very fragile looking figure. She stands okay, but she does have problems falling over from time to time. She doesn't have, like I said, any other accessories other than the potted flowers. And again, with all those extra hands that they just seem to be throwing at this figure, it makes me think that she really should have come with more things than just that pot of flowers. Poison Ivy, I feel, has a harder time of translating her cartoon counterpart. Because in the show, of course, she's a smaller, thinner framed character than, say, the likes of a Bane. It obviously means it's going to be a little bit more difficult to translate that to an actual figure and still have the full posability and still have the stability that the larger figures actually possess. Poison Ivy, for the most part, can stand, though her feet are a bit on the wonky side. She doesn't have much in the way of the accessories, so really a lot of it is just displaying her either with the crossbow shooting out like I've got right now and holding the flowers in her other hand, which is probably going to be the way I'm displaying the figure. One thing you will notice with the review of this one is that she doesn't come with a display stand. It seems lately a lot of the DC collectible releases have completely omitted using the stands, which is fine in some cases. Poison Ivy, for the most part, I can get her to balance on those little tiny feet of hers. So she doesn't really have as much the problem as, say, the likes of the newer adventures of Batman figures, which I seem to have a more of a difficulty standing simply because those feet are so tiny. Even if you remember the new Batman Adventures Two-Face, those feet were ridiculously small, as they probably would have to be, because if they wanted to make them as show accurate as possible, all unfortunately, all the negatives have to go along with that. The head sculpt on this particular figure is okay. It looks close enough like Poison Ivy does from the cartoon. The eyes are good, the eyebrows are decent, and the nose isn't that bad. But then she's got this strange puckering in her lips that doesn't make much sense. The hair is also a little higher than I, what I would have imagined. I think, if anything, the hair maybe could have been a little wider, but certainly not as high as they ended up sculpting it. Overall, this Poison Ivy filling in a collection slot that really needed filling, because I didn't have an original animated series uh, Poison Ivy, this one does fit that at least generally well. She could have been improved, yes. I feel like the head sculpt could have been a little bit better, but overall, it's not a terrible-looking Poison Ivy. And one good thing is, at least... 
DC Collectibles realized that not every collector had the opportunity to get the GCPD box set and was kind enough to release release these individually released. That is to say, though, we still don't have a Montoya, but we have all the other figures that made up that box set at least available for individual purchase. If you managed to pick up the Poison Ivy for yourself, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of it, or based on this review, what do you guys think of her, her head sculpt, the fact that she's missing accessories while it seems like her hands look like they should be holding things, all those things let me know down below in the comments section, always like reading your comments. If you guys are also new to this channel, consider hitting that subscribe button down below and the bell notification, and stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of videos coming your way. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.